Comic fans, true believers, webheads, welcome to another episode of The Worthy Ones, the video series where I take all the newest number ones that I bought for the comic book week and deem them worthy or not worthy. So before we dive into it, guys, I just gotta give a quick shout out to a Kickstarter. Guys, check out this Kickstarter from JW Publishing. Set roughly 18 years before the main story, this opening tale follows the future main character's parents on the harrowing night that drove them from their home. Step into a world full of swords, mystics, war, and ultimately hope for a brighter future. So guys, check out this Kickstarter. This is a pre-launch page. It will be launching very shortly. So just hit the notify me on launch, launch page. And once you do that, guys, you can back this project. So again, guys, Legend of Kaiden. This is done by JW Publishing. So here we go, guys. The Savage Strength of Starstorm, issue one. This is the first book we're going to be talking about today. And the reason why I picked this book up, not only it was in number one, but I love the cover art on this. It seemed like a much simpler time in comics. It was very, like, I felt like Kirby inspired, right? And so when I saw that cover, I was like, you know what? It seems like a fun, like, cosmic book, superhero book. Uh, why not check it out? So when I opened this book up, I saw the artwork in here and I was like, eh, it seems a little stiff, but it did have its moments, okay? So there's this one page right here where I was like, man, that's, that's actually pretty cool. Like the character looks neat. I can see what they're kind of going for here. But then when you get the character awakening, right? It should be, which I think is a two page spread, but instead it's like half a page of the character right here and then there's the other half of the character right here. So something must have happened when they were making this comic book. If anybody reads this review of this comic, let me know if there was an uh, issue with this. I can't see this actually being something that was purposely done, right? Um, but then when you get some of the regular art in here of the characters, it just seemed, I don't know, at times a little awkward. Uh, the coloring was fine in here and whatnot. But yeah, that's my situation when it comes to the art. Uh, but yeah, I see certain situations, they just seem a little stiff, right? So when it came to this story, it was about this character by the name of Grant. And he is not sure. He has like this form of amnesia and he's going to high school for the first time. Okay, and he doesn't want anybody to know that he's suffering from this condition. And right away, like he's getting picked on in high school, he meets this hot girl, and then out of nowhere, this kid just winds up getting these random superpowers. So it does have this mysterious element to it, but I could not gravitate to the characters at all. I felt like Again, they were very stiff, they had no real personalities, and it was just something that I just could not get into. The plot didn't really make sense to me, and so I was very disappointed. I see what they were really going for here, again, with a, like an 80s or 90s and the artistic like Kirby style, but it just it did not work for me. It felt a little bit awkward. So with that being said, I'm going to deem this book not worthy. Yeah, definitely disappointed. It just doesn't interest me for a second issue. Couldn't get attached to those characters. Uh, if I had to grade this, I'm going to give this a D. I, unfortunately, I really wanted to love this book, but with that possible printing error, like how does that even happen? Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna, not going to continue, guys. Catfight, issue one from IDW Publishing. This is written by Andrew Wheeler. And let me tell you guys, this was recommended to me by my shop manager, John. So I wanna thank him for introducing me to this comic because this is something that was definitely very different for sure and very creative, okay? So Catfight has pretty good artwork here. It's got a different, uh, you know, different types of characters when it comes to uh, people that steal, like cat burglars, right? There's a lot of action, it's bright, it's vibrant. I thought the characters like uh, masks and gowns and stuff were like really neat as well. And I found myself into the comic book as I was reading it. So the art went along really well 
with the story here. So now you're going to probably wonder, well, what's Clat Fight about? And should I buy this comic? Well, basically what it is, is John Wick meets Kill Bill, okay? So you get this character by the name of Felix. He's a cat burglar. This is almost like like Black Cat or Catwoman on steroids if they had this like whole crew and entourage type of thing, right? So it's this guy by the name of Felix. He's a cat burglar and he has one living relative left and that is like his grandmother. His mom passed away who was a, a cat burglar as well and the only person is his Nana which he doesn't really keep in contacts anymore because you know he cut it, cut her out of her life. You'll have to read the story to actually find out. Well he actually gets a call threatening his grandmother and so he winds up going to his grandmother's house and she actually wants to work with him in a particular job okay so it was cool learning about the history of the grandmother and the grandmother's name is called kitty midnight so she was one of the best thieves ever uh, in the 60s and 70s and she acquired a team as she's gotten older and they're called the kitty cat crime syndicate and they assembled all these different types of cat burglars around the world and they've made the ultimate team and they steal but they don't kill and things like that right so very interesting story here I, I really enjoyed it and I love how it's like this cat and mouse game and how um it's all it's all like cat related like i said the main character's name is felix have you guys ever heard of felix the cat old school cartoon i absolutely love that and then at the end of the comic our main character felix gets this phone call that's threatening to kill his his grandmother and all of a sudden we get this big explosion that happens and you're not sure who's alive or who's dead at the end so i'm really looking for for the uh, second issue of this. So I'm gonna deem this book worthy. Absolutely great story. This is how you do an issue one, where you get introduced to the main players of the story. You get a solid hold on, on who they are, what their characters and personalities are like. You got to see a little bit of history, but it didn't overwhelm you with a bunch of stuff. And then it finished it off with a awesome cliffhanger. So I'm gonna give this book an A. A really solid and unpredictable book that I was never going to buy. And I definitely recommend this book for you guys. The Rocketeer One Shot. That's right guys, like I said, one shot. So. When I saw this book was coming out, I was like, wow, great cover art, number one. Number two, I didn't pay attention to it being a one shot. That is absolutely my fault. But you do have some great people on this. You got Danny Bilson, Paul Demio, uh, Robert Windham, uh, Calvin Mayo. Uh, you got Adam Hughes as the artist, and you got Jay Lee as an artist in this comic. And there's some fun little stories in here. There's three stories. And if you're a Rocketeer fan, you're gonna absolutely love this. You got a story that has to deal with Amelia Earhart. There's another story with the girlfriend Betty who has um, is dealing with like an archaeologist. But the story that I loved, and it was like three pages in this book, it had that J. Lee artwork in there, and it was absolutely gorgeous as he is fighting some Japanese um, uh, fighter pilot, and just the art was outstanding. The visuals were great. There wasn't a lot of dialogue, but again, that artwork absolutely told the story. Look at this last page. I mean, absolutely gorgeous here. Uh, so I love that the best. That out of, the, out of the stories that were actually told in this comic. Uh, but again, all the stories were fun in their own right. And if you love the character, you can deem this book worthy and it's probably worth the pickup, right? However, if you don't have the five bucks uh, to pick this up and you need to save some money, then it wouldn't be worthy to pick up. So uh, this is kind of the ones where I'm gonna leave this up to you. Uh, but if you love the character and there's not enough Rocketeer in your life, definitely pick this one up. I'm gonna give this one an overall grade of a B. The inner stories were very entertaining with awesome artwork and it saved the best story for last. So the next book is another IDW book and it's Saturday Morning Adventures, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Issue 1, The Adventures Continue. Guys, this book, it just brings you back to the day. Let me just tell you of the classic turtles. When you open up this comic, 
you can expect nothing but greatness here. Look at those colors. Look at the way those turtles look. I mean, an absolutely gorgeous looking comic. This is everything that you remember from that 90s cartoon. It's got the Raya King in there. And when I got the whole, a hold of this comic and I started reading it, I was just in another world. This story is written by Eric Burnham and the art is done by Tim Latte and Jack Lawrence. So much fun here. And what happens is you get some common thugs here that are just stealing some kind of like what's what, like what's what do you always see in turtles there's like ooze there's like slime you know all kinds of mutagen all kinds of weird stuff and so there's these vials that go down into the sewer and the rat king comes across these uh these tubes right and all of a sudden he goes and he checks it out and all of a sudden it gets sprayed in his face and he no longer has control of the rats and he's beside himself and he doesn't even know what to do with himself but now, instead of rats, he's in control of the turtles, which is like reptiles, right? And so now the, the turtles do bidding for the Rat King, and they go on this mission, and they go against Shredder, and you actually see the Shredder in this comic. You see a little bit of Splinter. You see April O'Neil as well. Just great action, great fun, and great story. And the Rat King is using the turtles to obviously take over the city. I mean, what, what else would he want to do, right? Uh, this book is absolutely worthy. I say pick this book up. If you're a Turtles fan, you're going to love this, especially if you're a 90s Turtles fan. You're going to love this even more, guys. This book is an A. It's so much fun. I love it. So very small comic book week, only four issue ones to talk about this week, but there was some good ones in there and one not so great one, but I want to know in the comments below, are there any other number ones that I missed that you want to deem worthy or not worthy? In the comment section below, let me know. And of course, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Check out more content right here. And as always, keep buying, keep collecting, but more importantly, always read your comics. Guys, I'll see you real soon. Take care. Bye.